If I can say one thing for sure, then it is that Kurz Gesagt has developed one of the most fascinating and beautiful art styles ever seen on screens. It's bright and simple, but at the same time has a certain complexity to it. And even though it seems so easy, recreating it is pretty hard. But why exactly is that? And what makes these colorful blobs of matter so appealing in the first place? Well, let's find out about this. In this small three-part series, we're gonna take a look behind the breaths and the colors of Kurz Gesagt and try to find the secret, which makes the videos so appealing. In the last part, we have discussed how Kurz Gesagt's style has evolved over time, how they're using shading and strokes to form the illustrations, and how we can actually build these shapes ourselves. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can do so by clicking up here. In this part, we're gonna find out how Kurz Gesagt creates the shading and tinting and how we can achieve that effect ourselves. So now just lean back and enjoy the video. So why should you even bother about shading in the first place? Well, there are a few good reasons too. First of all, it gives much more depth to your illustrations and makes them look more interesting. Without shading, everything will kind of appear as flat blobs dancing around on your screen. But shading literally takes everything into a whole new dimension. Also, shading can help the viewer to assess the distance between objects or what material they are made of. For example, metallic materials would have much more highlights and overall reflections than matte surfaces. Also, you could for example make objects in the background appear darker, so the viewer pays attention to what's going on in the foreground. The possibilities are seemingly endless. There are a ton of things you can try out and play around with. Besides that, if used correctly, your shading can even have an emotional impact on your scenes. Take this image for example. What do you feel when looking at it? Probably not much, right? But what about now? Seems different, huh? So shading does not only bring depth to your illustrations, but also adds an emotional component to it. You can for example use it to make images much more dramatic. Or you go the other way around and make everything seem joyful and lighthearted. It really just depends on the story you want to tell. But how exactly do we achieve those effects now? In order to understand how lights and shadows work, it's best to start with looking at some references. And where would be a better place to start than real world? So let's go outside and look for some cool effects. So these already look quite cool. I will leave a link to them in the description. So my advice to you is to look at real world references and firstly start to draw them with a simple pencil. Because it's always easier to start with studying something realistic since you first need to understand how things look in real life before turning them into an abstract version of themselves. Also, this way you get the feeling of how shaders fall and how bright different parts get on certain objects. Just repeat this process a few times with different light situations and materials. Then you can carry on by bringing color into your drawings. So next you can see how colors behave when exposed to light. Because colors are relative which means that colors never stay only one shade, but instead change according to their surroundings. For example, if you have a green object, it could suddenly turn into red when exposed to red light, or shadows could take different hues than you'd expect. So just copy things from the real world until you feel comfortable about it. Then you can start carrying this knowledge into Illustrator. But let's be honest, most of us are probably too lazy to do all of these boring steps before finally getting into illustrating something, right? <laughs> so if you're as lazy as I am, here's a basic summary of the things you need to know. In general, if light hits an object, it of course gets illuminated at that spot and a shadow will form along the opposite side of that object. That's easy. But if we look at proper light studies, you will notice that it's a bit more complicated than that. Generally. Lighting consists of about 8 components, a highlight, a center light, half tones, a core shadow, an occlusion shadow, and cast shadow, reflected light, and in some cases a rim light. Now that might seem pretty complicated, but don't worry, because you can immediately forget about most of them again, because luckily Kurzgesagt simplifies this whole thing a bit. Now, if a light source is particularly strong, 
or if there's not enough space for a proper center light, Kurzgesagt likes to use strokes to form so-called rim lights along the edges of an object. On the other side of it, there is a shadow. This shadow is mostly made up of one or more shapes which warp around the base object. If a shadow shall appear especially dense or dark, they also like to stack multiple layers of shadows on top of each other, creating halftones. So these are the basics of shading. If you would like to create a light situation for your scene that makes your viewer feel a certain emotion, working with colors is also essential. But we will look deeper into that in the next video. Now we have talked a lot about the theoretical stuff. But I can sense that you're keen to actually do something. So let's get into actually illustrating things. So as we found out earlier, there are multiple elements that make up shading and tinting. With each you can create another look. We will go through the process of creating each of these elements and at the end I will have a little exercise for you. Okay, so when we're in Illustrator, let's just use this simple circle as our reference object. So first of all, let's create a highlight for this object. For that I will simply go by choosing the ellipse tool and just making a little circle like this. This is like pretty simple and you can also move it around a little. And then just go ahead and either if your light source is like really bright or if this object really reflects a lot of light, like if it's a shiny surface, I would go with just pure white. But you could also go with another shade, like a different variant of this shade. So let's change this back and let's go up here to our recolor artwork tool, to our color changing tool as I called it before. And let's open this and then you will probably get this window here first. I prefer to work with the older version of it, which you can get by pressing this button down here. And then you will get this window. If you want to keep it this way, just check this checkbox. And if you open it up next time, it will just appear like this. So what we're going to do in here is firstly turn up the lightness a bit, then turn down the saturation a little bit. And this could already be enough like for a highlight. But if you want to go like for a really kurzgesagtish look, I would recommend you to move the slider in either direction and just look which shade looks better. I think it looks better if you like go into the more like reddish kind of area of the slider. So let's move it up here and let's just just a little more just like this. So now if you're happy with this, you can just click OK and it will be applied and, then you, and now you get a little cool highlight. So the next thing we want to do is creating a core shadow. Now you could simply go ahead and just add a shadow like along this edge here. But if you want to go like really precisely, if you want to make it really realistic, of course the shadow would have to be in the same angle as this highlight, like on the opposite side to ensure that we can actually like put it on the same angle as this highlight, we could just draw in a little guideline for us. For that, let's just choose the line tool. Now just drag your line and to make sure that it's equally long on each side, you can press Alt so it gets like dragged out of the center. And if you want to make sure that it's completely horizontal, you can hold shift at the same time as well. So it gets snapped to your X axis and just give it a straw color and just move it a little upwards while holding down shift. You can make sure that it snaps to 45 degrees. Now we've got our line in place and now we can simply adjust the highlight to this position. So just grab it and make sure that you are Smart guides are turned on. If they're not, you can simply go up here to view and then to smart guides. All right, so now we got our light in place and now we can just create the shadow on the other side. So for that, we will just go into our layers panel, duplicate the base object twice and select the one that is at the very top. Now with this one selected, just hold down shift and press the arrow keys until you got, you've got you got a kind of shape like this. You need to pay attention to this part here, like to this part, 
because this will be our layer shadow. We will use this part to kind of cut out the shape that will make up this shadow. Okay, so once you've done that, simply get the shape builder tool and use the one shape to cut a hole into the other shape. So now we got our shadow shape and our base shape. For the color of your shadow, just do the same thing as we did earlier with the highlight. Just go up here and this time you just go the other way around. So you just turn the lightness down a little, increase the saturation a bit and this looks already quite fine. Just play around with it until you're happy with it and then just click OK again. But if you want to create a really, really kurzgesagtisch look, here's a little tip. As I've mentioned in my earlier videos already, Kurzgesagt always likes to put some kind of puffering to the objects. So we can also do this with these shapes here and shading in general. So we could just select this shape and give it stroke to it with the same color as the base shape. Then increase the thickness of the stroke to about 20. And make sure that your stroke is centered like in the middle, that it's not inside and not outside. So then we got this little effect going on here. And we can do the same thing to our shadow. And now you will see that these corners here go kind of out of your shape. And you can fix this by just going into your stroke settings again and putting the corner type on round. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is, like you don't have to do this necessarily, but you can also add an occlusion shadow, which is like a darker part of this shadow here, which like appears on this side. So to achieve this effect, we can just duplicate this shape here, like the shadow, then remove the fill and turn down the lightness of this stroke that is left a bit. Then just click OK and then choose your scissors tool and cut the shape apart like this and delete the part you don't need. And then you got this cool stroke here going on. Now, if this shape is kind of out of center, we can fix this by simply going to our rotating tool, which we can get by pressing R. Then you will see this little crosshair here appearing, which shows you like where the object that you've selected will rotate around. Now, since we wanted to rotate around this base shape here, just look for the center of this shape and do a left click on it. Then you can simply just drag it around and it will like be perfectly rotating around the center of your object. Now, if you want to go even more three-dimensional, we could also add a rim light. These lights usually only appear if light comes like from behind the object, but we could also use it to kind of say like which direction the light is coming from. And for this, we don't even need to create anything new. We can just use the stuff we already have. So just make sure that your line is visible again, your guiding line, and just select this line you've just created and duplicate it. And then choose your rotating tool again. First look for the center again. Then just turn this on again and then just make sure that it rotates around the object and that it actually like ends up in the center. Yeah, just go with something like this. And then just turn this off again and change the color of this to something like this. So now we're basically almost done with our shape. One thing we can also do is if we like have a ground where your object is on, you can always add a cast shadow. So to create the shadow, just select the base object you have and just duplicate it and then just press it down on the ground. Now just move it to the opposite side from where your light is coming from and just move it into position so it looks good. We can disable this again and then just find some cool color that matches the surface below. And there we go. Now we've got our little ball shaded. Of course, you could also go nuts with this by adding all kinds of effects to it and everything. But I think what I've just shown you is a good base of how you can shade objects in the style of Kurzgesagt. However, this workflow is pretty destructive, meaning that you can't undo or like change a shadow if you've placed it because you've just like cut the shape apart and therefore created another shape and you can't just like simply go in there and change this shape again. 
And this could be a problem for like if you want to later animate it or anything, or if you just want to change like the direction where the light comes from. And with this method, you would just have to go in there and create everything from scratch again. And to fix this problem, we could, for example, work with masks. So duplicate your base object twice again and move your upper circle like this again. And then you can simply go ahead and make this shape completely black because masks always work with two colors. Black is basically gone and white is visible. So if you got like a mask and there's a black point in this mask, this part where the black point is won't be visible in the mask. And the mask will basically just cover an object and show certain parts of it or hide certain parts of it. And with these two colors, you can either show or hide it. White is showing and black is hiding. So we will make this shape here black because we want to hide this part here of this shape. And now just select this shape beneath and go up here to transparency and click make mask. Then deselect this checkbox that says clip and there you go. Now you've also got a shadow. But the cool thing is that if you now like click this chain icon and disable it, you can now move this mask around and change the whole look of it. Like if you want to go for a small shadow, you just go like this. Or if you want to go for a really shad shadow, you can just shrink this down and place it like this, you know? Also, if you're stuck in this mode here and can't, and can't select anything but your shape, just click up here again and you will go out of this mode. Then you can like work normally again. So now you know how to create shading and tinting. Of course, this works differently for every shape and surface. But if you play around with these techniques, you should get the hang of it quite quickly. Also, an additional thing that you can do if you have a bright light source is either adding circles with only a little amount of opacity around it or adding a glow effect to the object that emits light. Also, here's a little life hack for you. If you want to create shading really quickly, you can do so by using gradients. Just create a gradient with the light and the dark part and place it onto an object. In some cases, this can really help getting some beautiful results, especially for objects with less details, like for example ones in the background. Now, since we got all of the learning stuff done, let's get into actually building our own scenes. For that, I would like to encourage you to take this illustration I've already shown you earlier and shade it using the things you've learned just now on new already. You can either go for a happy, sad or even cinematic look. Further material on how to use shading for different purposes is linked in the description. Also, feel free to show me your results over on our Discord server. I'd love to see what you've created. Anyhow, I really hope you enjoyed this video and could learn something new. I'm really sorry that I took so long for this part. It's just hard to stay motivated sometimes. However, it's always motivating and great to see what you've created. So if you would like to show off some of your work and gain some feedback on it, feel free to do so on our Discord. There are many talented people on there and a super nice community. So feel free to check it out and join us. Also, if you have any criticism or questions or anything, feel free to let me know about it in the comments. Now have a great day, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.